everyone, welcome to section 5.3. So we're going to be focusing on the graphs of polynomial functions in this section. We're going to use factoring to find some zeros of these polynomials. I'm going to talk about multiplicities of zeros. We're going to graph these polynomial functions and then we're going to use the intermediate value theorem. Now I mentioned this in the previous section, but it's good to have this this comparison of traits file. You can print it out or you can have it electronically, but for chapter five and in these beginning sections, we're going to be in this column. We're gonna be graphing polynomials. And then in the later sections, we'll be on to the rational functions. So we're really gonna talk about X and Y intercepts in here, specifically the X intercepts. We're gonna try and pin down for X intercepts, do you cross an x-axis or you, do you bounce off of it? And you might be wondering, well, what are you talking about? Well, I, I tried to give you a graph of one of them. If we scooch this all the way up on this cortic here, and I know it's a little hard to see in this video, but this zero here, you can see that the graph bounces off the x-axis, where over here the x-intercept, the zero, crosses through, and this one crosses. So we have bounce, cross, cross. You can see here cross, 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 right? So all of these are crossing through the x-axis except for that first x-intercept there. And we're going to use zeros and their multiplicities to identify when you're gonna bounce off the x-axis or when you touch it versus when you cross it. So that's one of the main goals of this section is to talk about the zeros and their multiplicities because it will ultimately help us graph. And again, at the end of this, even though we do all of the algebra by hand, we can still check ourselves with our graphing calculator. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and look at example one. I'm gonna scooch this up. All right, so we wanna use factoring to find zeros of polynomials. And when I say zeros, when you hear that phrase zeros, that's another word for x-intercepts. And zeros is the term you'll see on your calculator when you hit second calc to call up your, or I should say second trace, but you call up your calculation menu, option two says zero. All right, so for x and y intercepts, again, we've, we've talked about this a, a bunch of times, but you always let the opposite letter zero out. And it's typically easier to find the y-intercept than the x-intercept, because there will only ever be one y-intercept and there could be many x-intercepts. You see I have a degree six polynomial. I could have up to six x-intercepts here, but let's start with the y-intercept. So whenever you wanna find the y-intercept, you're going to let x equal zero. So let's see what this will give us here. I'm basically asked to evaluate the function at zero. So f of zero would be, let's see, zero minus three times zero plus two times zero, so it is zero. So my y-intercept is the ordered pair zero comma zero. So this function goes through the origin. Okay, great. Now for x-intercepts, it's going to be a little bit more convoluted, a little more intricate. So we want to let y equal zero, or another way of saying that is I'd like to set my function to zero, right? I wanna let f of x be equal to zero. So let's, let's try this. So this would imply that x to the sixth minus 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared is equal to zero. Now we don't have a formula to solve a sixth degree polynomial, right? We have the quadratic formula. You could even go look up the cubic formula. That's ugly. We have a couple more formulas for higher powers, but we don't have one for x to the sixth. And you can see under the outcome here, it says use factoring. So let's factor this and see how far we can go. First rule of factoring is to take out the GCF if it exists, and I do have a greatest common factor. I can at least see on the powers of x that they have an x squared in common. So let me factor out the x squared. That'll leave me with x to the fourth minus three x squared plus two being equal to zero. Now, this may remind you of doing u substitutions way back in chapter two. And I just wanna remind you what we did back in chapter two. When we had polynomials in quadratic form, do you vaguely remember we would let u equal x squared and then u squared would be x to the fourth and we would do a u substitution. 
And if you don't remember this, it was towards the end of chapter two. I think it was the very last section in chapter two. But then I could say this was x squared times u squared minus three u plus two being equal to zero. And then all of a sudden I have an equation, or I should say I have a trinomial in quadratic form. So this would be x squared times u minus one and u minus two, right? The two, uh, the negative one and the negative two multiply to positive two, but negative one plus negative two adds to negative three. And I could back sub this and say this was x squared minus one times x squared minus two being equal to zero. Or maybe you just saw it. You're more than welcome to just skip from this step to this step to see that, oh, I can break up this quartic if I make it x squared minus one and x squared minus two. Now I'm still not done. Okay, I can break down these quadratic factors. This is a difference of squares, and this is also, it's just that the square root of two isn't an integer. So I'm looking at x squared times x minus one, x plus one, x minus root two, x plus root two being equal to zero. So I'm picking up a lot, a lot of different zeros. So the x coordinates of my x intercepts so far, let's see. If I have the zero product property, any of these factors could zero out. X squared zeroes out at zero. X minus one zeroes out at one. X plus one gives me negative one. I get positive root two and negative root two. And like always, when I ask you for intercepts, those are points on a graph, so you owe me an X and a Y coordinate. So really I know I have zero, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, root two zero and negative root two comma zero. So six degree polynomial, I know I have at most six zeros. I actually only had five this time. When we start talking about multiplicities, we'll see how we had a double root at, at zero. But I have five of them, all right? And then I have my one y intercept. And I could always get my graphing calculator out, type this function in and make sure it kind of matches up with my algebra here. So let's just do that so we have it for reference. So let me go to my y equals, clear this out. So we're looking at x to the sixth minus three x to the fourth plus two x squared. And if you're wondering where I'm getting that little caret key or the power key, it's right below the clear key here. All right, so whenever you hit this button, that means you're gonna have a power on x. I'm gonna hit zoom six and I should see a bunch of zeros, a bunch of x-intercepts. And it's so hard to see all of them because they're so crunched together. And actually, I, I really do struggle to see them. I'm going to adjust my window. I would like to really zoom in here. And we haven't zoomed in yet on our calculator together, so let me show you this. I'm gonna hit zoom, and if you'll see option two, you can zoom in. All right, so I'm gonna go down to two and hit enter, and then, it's hard to see here, but there's a little blinking guy. Let me head up. Can you see this little like symbol? It's blinking. So what I can do is I can send that using my arrow keys wherever I want. I'm gonna get it right at the origin. I'd like to zoom in at the origin, but if you wanted to zoom in up here, you can move blinky up here and hit enter. But I'd like to zoom in at the origin, so I'm going to leave it at the origin and hit enter. And when I hit enter, we should get a better look at this function, and I want you to see it, right? So just take note, there's a zero or an x-intercept at negative root two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Excuse me, one and root two. And I just want you to take note, crosses the x-axis, crosses the x-axis, touches the x-axis, or bounces off of it, right? I bounce, crosses, crosses. All right, and we're gonna talk about these things called multiplicities, which will help us recognize why four of them cross the x-axis and this one specifically just touches the x-axis. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to example two. We're gonna try another polynomial and we're gonna find its x and y intercepts. I'll see you in a bit, bye.